Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a full tutorial for beginners for the program Laser Gribble. It's a free laser engraving software app, whatever you want to call it. So I'll show you guys how to download it. If this is a, if you guys have a Windows computer or Apple, it might change, but uh, this is a Windows 10 Pro. Uh, uh, computer so you just go to uh, I'll, I'll have a link in the description you guys click on but you uh, go here click the big download button you'll need to install it I already have it installed so just follow the steps here and then it will show up in the in the back of your guys stuff it will show up in the on your guys desktop screen so once you have it downloaded it should look like this So a few tips for this program, um, straight off the bat, is not all photos are going to look very good, especially ones that are not very fine line or photos that have a lot of darkness in the background. So I suggest looking up uh, sketch art or if you're trying to do signs, lettering, um, just stuff that it, not everything's going to look good, that's all, to be honest everything's gonna look how you guys expect it to look so here's a photo that I'm gonna try to uh, laser engrave probably tomorrow but I'll show you guys so here there's a lot of settings like a brightness and contrast and white clipping for the brightness I usually try to get it to the point where you can see the most detail but still have enough white right around there for this photo. It's kind of hard to explain. See that's too far. You still want to have all the detail but not too dark. See how it changed the background to like a gray color? I want to make sure the, it's still white but you still get all the detail you want. Oh, that's too much detail. There. Kind of perfect. So you see these roof, these lines in the roof here? You still want to have that. The white clipping, this is super important. So pretty much if you go to zero you're going to have a big barrier like all of this is going to show up as almost a, a very light gray color on the wood or whatever surface you're trying to engrave it's not going to look the best so you want to have the pink here showing where the laser is not going to pick up and where it's not going to engrave all the black lines they're going to engrave that's why I said uh, fine line photos do the best because if it's too dark you're just going to have a big gray dark laser patch you're not going to have any detail in your photo or what you're trying to engrave so this pink is super important to make sure that there's wherever you don't want the laser to go is where this pink would be so it still shows up all these dark lines in the roof and there so I usually go by a uh, line to line um, that's the best one for me uh, you could go you could use these other settings but for wood and what I found is most of those are kind of pointless um, quality I don't really see a point in putting that any lower than 10,000 because I don't see why you'd want any lower of a quality like you might as well have it as high quality as possible at least in my opinion I mean I might be wrong but <clears throat> I don't see a point in changing that so Here's a super, here's another super important one, speed. Um, this is going to depend on the quality and the density of the wood. Um, all different types of wood are obviously different densities, so you kind of kind of have to mess around with the type of wood you want to engrave on. So I find 2,000 or even like 1,700 works good for getting a like a dark but not a not two of a more of a burnt charcoal it's more of like a uh, for this is for bamboo I'm talking about for like bamboo cutting boards I like to do for photos and stuff that isn't too thick like these are pretty fine lines they're pretty skinny like if you're gonna have a large area of lines that are super close together I'd probably turn that up a bit but uh, if you want a nice dark looking line that doesn't burn into the wood. For I've tried it on elm and bamboo so far. 
and 1700 is perfect for um, for any pictures like this uh, I do constant power and this is really gonna depend on your laser the width and the height uh, this one goes to 180 millimeters on the max so whichever one would be higher that's I think uh, 180 millimeters two inches that's oh wrong one that's about seven that's seven inches there pretty much seven seven point zero eight but that's a seven um yeah so that's gonna depend on obviously how big you want the photo and how big the laser could go mine's max out at seven inches or 180 millimeters next uh this is going to show you how long this is this is the max size my laser goes so it's going to take a while which is an hour the the speed you have also is going to change the um change the time there and also even the white clipping is going to change the time because it's going to pick up less dark spots so less spots to engrave which is going to be faster time but faster is if you're impatient this might not be the best for you because uh sometimes these take a long time and sometimes they're quick but there's a lot of variables there um for me i like to keep it out i usually like i keep the power at 100 percent, and i mostly change the speed uh you could change the speed and change i i, I feel it's too much stuff to be changing around and getting used to so i find just change the speed that'll make so then your lines are less dark or whatever you want but the power is obviously to uh see how strong the laser is going to be going uh, you could also do multiple laps so let's say it comes out and you're like damn it's too light be make sure before it finishes you click um another lap because that means a lap means going back over the lasers or over its uh path again but if it if the if the full rotation finishes you cannot click that and you're kind of screwed so if it doesn't look dark enough to you you can either as you're going change the power which is very risky because you might it might not look as good as you might think i would suggest do a second lap and then if it's not dark enough put it at like 50 percent power do another lap and that should darken it up it might make the lines look a bit weird but you don't really have very much other options unless you want to sand the wood down and restart um yeah but the app's amazing for a free app there's other apps to like um laser burn and stuff i believe it's called but that costs money and you know if you're doing this for a, if you're doing this for a hobby and you're not really trying to make a business out of it i don't really see a point for buying that i mean it, it only costs 80 dollars canadian i believe but still if you don't want to if you're not going that big with it there's no reason to be buying it um yeah what else is there uh so for your laser this is the most of the stuff here is not really that important um the globe button's really important you press the globe and this is your little keypad to move around the laser so you can change it up and down to see how far you want to go per click this is your arrow pad so obviously you click right your laser will go right click left it goes left up down you know the just that this changes how far each click moves uh, every time you move it and you get to a point where you want just click the globe and this is framing which maps out where the laser is going to go uh, those are mainly the only two things here that actually matter at least to me I've been lasering with this laser in this program for about a month and I haven't used any of our stuff here uh, yeah so Alright guys, that's the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Comment. Uh, yeah, it wasn't the funnest video, but entertainment for some. Education for some. Thank you guys. Peace.